Welcome to Module 9, Evidence of Supernatural Design from Low Entropy at the Big Bang. This is the ninth module in a 12-module series entitled God and Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Maja Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Magis Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we've been speaking about the evidence for a beginning, a creator, supernatural design, the evidence for God that comes from contemporary physics and astrophysics. Up to this point, we've been really looking at the evidence for a beginning, and we have seen the confluence of six different evidence points, three from the law of entropy and three from space-time geometry, that all converge uh, on a single conclusion, the high, high probability that there was a beginning of the universe, a beginning at which the universe actually came into existence, a point at which the universe could not have created itself, implying that there was some causative force outside of our space-time asymmetry, some kind of a powerful transcendent causative force that brought us, brought the entire universe into existence. Now, there's a third evidence point in our triangle here, so the law of entropy, space-time geometry. Now we're going to get to a third evidence point, and, and that's called anthropic coincidences. And what anthropic coincidences mean are things which are very highly improbable or conditions which are highly improbable or values of universal constants which are highly improbable that just happen to come into existence, all of them being very necessary for a life form. Now this kind of evidence is a little bit different from the evidence we've been talking about for a beginning because it really isn't talking about the beginning of the universe and therefore a creator of the universe, what it's talking about is super intelligent, supernatural design of the constants and initial conditions of our universe, which would in turn lead to the thought that there is a super intelligent designer, which would be coincident with this creator, meaning the creator would not only be super intelligent, but there would be even more evidence for this supernatural being for God. So let's get into it for just a second. And let's start off with the whole idea of an anthropic coincidence. Again, just uh, look at it a little bit more slowly. Um, we notice that in our universe we have initial conditions. And we need these initial conditions in order for us to get a life form. For example, as we'll see in a moment, we need a very low entropy universe in order to get uh, uh, a life form and complexification that would be required. We need useful energy. We can't have a run-down universe uh, and, and get a complexified uh, evolutionary structure that would give rise to life forms. Um, we also notice that we need values of our universal constants. And these values of our universal constants are absolutely necessary, but they're highly, highly, highly improbable. And so we notice that Either we're really fortunate in getting very highly improbable universal constants and initial conditions together, uh, which are absolutely necessary in order to get a life form, skip an intelligent life form, just any life form, um, or uh, something has deliberately designed it. And we're going to say that this is beyond the realm of pure chance, and this is what physicists uh, have uh, been speculating about. And what could be the source of these highly important coincidences, necessary coincidences for life forms, which don't seem to be within the realm of pure chance at all, we're going to have to find a, a suitable explanation for this. So let's get uh, to the, the heart of the matter. Now let's take one example. You'll recall when we were talking about entropy, uh, we talked about a calculation that Roger Penrose made um, for uh, our low entropy condition. Just recall two things. The first thing is 
that low entropy is something we need. We need a lot of useful energy in our universe in order to have evolution, complexification, that would lead to a life form and even lead to the development of a life form. So we need a low entropy condition, but as Roger Penrose calculated, the low entropy of our universe, so important an initial universal condition, the low entropy of our universe is highly, highly improbable. 10 raised to the 10, raised to the 123 to 1 against a low entropy condition. Much higher odds in favor of a high entropy, disordered, chaotic condition. Now, as I said before, that number is so large that if every zero were 10-point type, it would take up a, a, a chunk of the universe. And, and more than that, it's, it's like a monkey uh, typing the, the, the corpus of Shakespeare by random typing of the keys. I mean, this is so improbable that no one really can explain the occurrence of our low entropy universe by pure chance. It's just not reasonable. It's just not responsible. And most physicists do not attempt to do this. So what we are left with is, well, how do you explain this incredibly improbable event just happened to be occurring, this event which requires such incredible fine-tuning, so improbable, just happened to have occurred at our Big Bang so that we could get the life forms that we need. Well, if pure chance isn't going to do it, physicists say, well, you've got two options. Paul Davies declares them uh, very uh, nicely. On the one hand, you have the thought of supernatural design, um, that some very, very intelligent being has felicitously assembled all the initial conditions and the values of the constants of our universe to come up uh, with something that will give rise to a life form. Or, well, you can't have pure chance, so because that's out of the question. So maybe you have a multiplicity of universes. Maybe... There's like zillions and zillions and zillions and zillions of other universes and all of these, maybe in a multiverse, and all of these things have uh, led to uh, the, the, you know, our universe, highly improbable though it may be, our universe, as it were, lucks out, uh, but it's had many, many, many universes uh, to go through to test out initial conditions until they finally got to ours. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the multiple universe theory in just a moment. But if it seems like the multiple universe theory is unobservable, a violation of Occam's, con of, uh, Occam's razor, and at the same time um, requires as much fine-tuning as um, uh, the universe that it's trying to explain, uh, then as we'll see in a moment, uh, the only recourse that we have left, if pure chance is out of the question, if, if the m multiple universe or the multiverse theories require as much fine-tuning as the universe that it's trying to explain, then we're only left really with one reasonable and responsible option, and that would seem to be a super-calculating, super-intelligent designer. And so the first thing to just take note of is that... Um, it seems very likely if the multiple universe theories that we'll be discussing later don't work out, we are confronting superintelligent design. Now let's go back to our diagram for just a moment. You can see at this point that there seems to be reasonable evidence for a superintelligent designer of the universe, and it seems to be coalescing with the beginning of the universe but there's far more to this than just the Penrose number, just the, the odds against our low entropy universe being 10 raised to the 10 raised to the 123 to 1. As we'll see in our upcoming episodes, um, there are constants of our universe. And the constants of the universe, a constant is, is a number. It's a simple number. It's like the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. And that number is invariant. And, of course, we can also see that, uh, um, well, Planck's constant has a specific number. 
we can see that uh, there are Planck minimums of uh, 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. It's the smallest possible space in the universe. Or Planck time, 10 to the minus 43 uh, seconds is, is the smallest possible unit of time in the universe. And we notice, too, that there are constants for all of our universal forces. There's a constant for gravitational force, a constant for the strong nuclear force, a constant for our weak force, and even three constants that pertain to electromagnetic forces, uh, a constant for the mass, rest mass of a proton, the rest mass of an electron, and the charge of a proton electron. And so, of course, we'll see in our next episode that all of these constants have numbers that are absolutely essential for a life form, and they're highly improbable, again pointing to a supernatural uh, designer. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www.magisreason. F-A-I-T-H dot O-R-G. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy, on the website or through Amazon.com.